sanctuary was proposed um, by uh, the, uh, the US government. Well, it was proposed by uh, a community group, but uh, en enacted um, under a memorandum uh, by the administration to uh, explore possible sanctuary designation for this area and there is a there's a period uh, of time that this takes it's a uh, rather extensive in some cases um, but what happened recently is that uh, the pro the proposal uh, for sanctuary designation went out for comment uh, earlier this spring um, and community members and community groups stakeholders had a chance to submit their comments um, on the uh, proposal for a sanctuary designation and right now the process is in the phase where uh, different government um, offices that are responsible for potentially managing or enacting these um, these sanctuaries are um, preparing reports that summarize the feedback received by the community and after this um, the uh, NOAA, NOAA offices that deal with National Marine Sanctuaries will formulate a plan on how to uh, enact these proposals based on the feedback okay, and uh, that will be published presumably later this year or maybe early next year, um, probably early next year with uh, I assuming everything goes s swimmingly, um, possibly sanctuary designation by late 2024 or 2025. Crinoid. Beautifully explained, Steve. Yeah, it's a complicated process. It's a lot to walk through. So yeah. that's perfect. Yeah, there's a lot of stakeholders and, and it's important to hear all voices uh, yeah. when you're uh, both expanding protected boundaries in, in this area and uh, changing the level of protection or adding la level layers of protection uh, and conservation for uh, both resources on the seafloor as well as um, the biology that lives on the seafloor which is is a type of resource in and of itself an evolutionary resource you might say I love this terrain are we moving sufficiently upslope or is it um, kind of still across the this uh, it's just slowly across. Okay. If it gets uncomfortable, let, let us know. We can probably change a little bit. Okay, thanks. There are some bamboo corals here. I've been noticing over the past few minutes, bamboo corals uh, and then a couple of black coral colonies, um, both of which we seem to have sampled over the past uh, few dives. Uh, shrimp. Just a shrimp. Hey, shrimp. Yeah. I did see a cup okay. coral a bit earlier too. I just I was in the middle of talking. Yeah, so Gabby, this move is completing now. So if if yeah, if you're good with that, I'll do zero point two knots. Bridge now. Uh, five zero meters, two five zero at zero point two knots, please. Sorry, Karen, are you good about that too? Yeah. Okay. Steve, there's some brain layback. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody online is wondering if water samples collected from this depth have any microplastics in them. Do you know anything about that? Um, it is not something we sample for, but uh, it's something we could sample for. Um, we didn't receive any input from scientists uh, in our community about specific microplastic sampling, but it's something we have done before with, uh, in partnership with other scientists that have come on Nautilus. Um, so no, I don't know much about microplastic situation here, but I know there's ongoing research on both um, animals that live in the Pacific Remote Islands uh, and other broader parts of the Central Pacific uh, respect with respect to microplastics.
So what are we looking at here, lobate flows or pillows? Uh, definitely pillows. Um, sea cucumber coming yeah. up. The same species we looked at previously. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into these different types of morphologies um, between the magma, the eruption style, um, slope. That's cool. This is interesting. Yeah. All the protrusions. Oh, it's moving. Yay. I don't think I've seen this species before. Very good. <laughs> it's just kind of rolling off. <laughs> I, I suppose when your when your body's a big cushion. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have an idea of why so many of the sea cucumbers at this depth are um, <laughs> are transparent? Yep. So, well, we hypothesize that they may be transparent because pig pigments are energetically expensive. Um, you know, when you think about it, pigments have some density of chemicals that that have to be produced um, and that production of those pigments if it doesn't serve a purpose may actually uh, be energetically taxing and and weigh on their fitness and so maybe they develop or lost uh, the ability to produce pigment the so coral coming up to the upper left as well Does anybody in this control van know about RTK? Um, so somebody wants to know how are we able to get accurate RTK location corrections when we're mapping or exploring so far from land? I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. yeah. Might have to ask what RTK is. Yeah, so whoever asked that question, if you can specify, what do you mean by RTK? See if we can get you an answer. Okay. So we're going like north now? Okay. No. Oh, is that that we had to go on the the ship's bearing? All right, so we're moving up the part of the feature now that is, well, we suspected it was possibly carbonate at one point, so no indication of that yet. Um, you know, the only carbonate rock that we've collected so far still had that ferromanganese nice. crust, so uh, as far as my knowledge, I'm not sure uh, to tell. what we would see uh, other than what we're already kind of seeing right now, but uh, maybe time to ground yeah I support that but doesn't so look like there's anything when when front row is comfortable that um, they're in a safe spot we're gonna poke around for a rock yeah sounds good um, let me know where you see a rock you like yeah I mean this area is fine if you want to just uh, 
drop down, we could probably grab something in this okay. in this field over here. I think I want to yeah. hold the ship for this one. Bridge. Coming down. Hold position. Agreed. Yep. Holding. RTK, I'm getting a real time kinematic. Which rock are we looking at? Uh, this rock here, if okay. possible. Circle again, please. Sure. Kind of a small one, but it should work. Too small? No, I think it'll be fine. Uh, can you kind of rotate a little bit? Yeah. It's about 10 centimeters. Yeah, that'll be all right. Okay. Uh, you want to hold it while you make this move, or did you want to put it away now? Um, we can toss yeah, it in the forward let's pop box. Pop up too. a little. Oh, you want it in the forward box? It, yeah, we can just toss it in there. Okay. If it's okay. easier to. Yeah, we have time for that. And uh, can you also retract the? Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, sorry, lambda or uh, omega? Lambda. Lambda. Okay, thank you. Sample 126? Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. Cool. Got a little heft to it. <laughs> Part two. It is a rock. Um, somebody online wants to know if we have ever found any meteorites and how would they stand out from other rocks? They wouldn't. They wouldn't? They wouldn't. All right. <laughs> Not in this environment, anyway. <laughs> if you go to Antarctica, they might stand out. How so? May maybe the Sahara Desert, because they will be the only black rocks <laughs> in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> But that is, uh, you know, where where uh, meteorites are often collected, is uh, in deserts and snowy environments. Okay, time to head straight up slope. So it wasn't as steep as I had expected it to be um, on the bathy when we planned the dive, mm. um, which could indicative maybe it's not reef related the more we're out here exploring these flat top seamounts though the more urgent I think it the need is to write a paper about that not all flat top seamounts or table mounts are Reefs. Reefs, I think that needs to be said. And that's kind of going back to what I was saying earlier that uh, about the formation of the seamounts themselves. They, they, they might just be, you know, effusive lava flows yeah. uh, that halted for some reason before reaching the surface of the... It's remarkably, yeah. Remar I mean, either they're smooth from 
I mean, could they be smoothed enough from crust accumulation that it would affect the bathymetry of, you know? It's that's to be determined. Yeah. That's a good question, though. Okay, we're in good shape. Um, I think we should just head, if science is open to it, along the heading that Herc's currently on, which is 260. So a little off of what we originally talked about, Steve, but it seems like then we can be front on. Yep, as long as we have time to poke around, we don't have to move very quickly. We're actually making really, really, really good time. Great. One more really. Put emphasis. The slope's a bit, is the slope a bit shallower here too? Is that just my imagination? Feels like it. Let me look at the profile. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to do here, science? Uh, Can we take that big boulder? <laughs> <laughs> uh, other than that, no. getting some questions about the ROVs themselves and how are they powered. Um, yeah, so we're using two ROVs on this dive. We're using Hercules as well as Atalanta. So are we, are we good for a move? Um, I'm okay if Karen is. Oh, fine. Cool. Do we want to do three zero meter stuff? I don't, uh, that worked okay. It did, yeah. yeah. Okay. And we were able to stop quickly, so. Yeah, perfect. Bridge now. Uh, five zero meters, two six zero at zero point two knots. So if you take a look um, in channel two, you can see the view from Atalanta looking down on Hercules, and you can see that they are connected with a 30 meter tether. So Hercules is connected to Atalanta and then Atalanta is connected to the ship. So both of these ROVs are getting their power source from the ship. And again, ROV means remotely operated vehicle. So there is nobody inside of these machines. Everybody is here on the ship on the EV Nautilus, and they are being, uh, the ROVs are being controlled by the ROV pilots who are here in the room with me. So in the control van, we have Gabby as well as Karen, and they are the ones that are piloting and controlling the ROVs from the ship. We do a mighty fine job, I might add. Go for Zoom. <coughs> Perfect. Chris, Gorgia, Colleen, no one's home. Okay. Okay. We've sampled a few of these bottle brushes before, so we don't really need uh, to collect any more of them. Just the Karen, same, a lot of these bamboo uh, corals. Is your uh, camera still retracted? You can, can undo that, yeah. Uh, it's fully out. Okay. That's spicy to do a forward box sample and <laughs> with the camera out. Spicy. It was speedy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting questions about USBL system. Do either of the ROV pilots know what that is and how that helps with navigation? That's a that's such that's a cool. that's a nap question. Yeah, I'll take that one. All right. Um, so the USBL system is, stands for Ultra Short Baseline, um, and that refers to the acoustic, it's an acoustic um, instrument that sends out acoustic pings, um, and based on uh, the rate at which they return to the, um, the transponder, they were able to, or the system is able to calculate um, distances. So the USBL system actually communicates from the or helps the, the ROVs communicate back to the ship. And then there's the DVL system, which is essentially um, the Doppler velocity log, which is uh, 
calculating the distance from uh, the C4 back to the ROVs. So USBL pings go up to the ship and back, DVL pings go to the C4 and back, and from those two um, acoustic systems we're able to um, determine kind of position of the vehicles in relation to the ship and the, and the C4. Um, so those, those are the two main systems that we're using to navigate the vehicle subsea. Pathies on the right hand side. Um, and I think that's it. I don't. Gabby has a lot more experience in this world. Um, uh, okay, for Zoom. What was the question? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I heard USBL and I thought no. no, um, no you're, you're doing stuff. So. Uh, I just did a basic overview, but you, you have a lot more experience in the world of acoustic instruments. So, I'm wondering if you had anything else to add. Um, USBL can tell where the vehicles are using essentially time of flight. Like it really couldn't be that much simpler. Like it times how long it sends a pulse of sound out when it hits the vehicle. A little uh, sensor, a little uh, transducer on the vehicle hears it and says, "Oh, I'm here," and sends a pulse of sound back. And it just counts how long that takes. That tells you how far away the vehicles are. It does a little bit more complicated math to tell which direction the vehicles are from the. Um, transducer on the ship, um, but it's just sending sound waves out and back uh, and gives you a range and bearing to the vehicles. Uh, I think we're okay like with that when we can move The up. most basic way to be able to tell where your vehicles are in the water uh, or anything. We put them on moorings, we put them on underwater platforms, we put them on just anything. Little instruments that we're going to leave down there for a long time. On the um, boulder to the right that we just... Uh, came around, there was something on top of it I'd like to check out. Uh, Brittany, does that seem like it was the, addresses the thing up that they were here. asking? Up there, okay. Yeah. Uh, I believe so. Oh. Yeah, they just wanted to elaborate more about the USBL system and if anybody had anything else about the, uh, what was it, <laughs> RTK. Uh, the, R did R they R say R RTK? Yes, RTK. <laughs> we do not use any RTK here. All right. Um, that's, yeah, that would, right. uh, we know, we resolve our ship's position using, we zoom that? uh, yeah. the we GPS may is on the ship. We may want to a piece of that, too. Uh, okay. without additional RTK. All right. Thank you so much, Gabby. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we collect a piece of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Bridge, Nav. And where is Hold this going to go? Uh, I, th I think we'll try for a snip and slurp. Okay. Um, yeah. Should we'll see how much we get. Uh, we'll image the colony first if we can. Yeah, do you want a quick tighter zoom before we take a snip? Yes. Okay. Uh, pan up just for the zoom and uh, I think not sample salvo just do dive salvo do you want me to look at the arm and the, uh, the nozzle or I'll just get the arm out here can we pan left real quick if, yeah. if possible Thank you. We're going to do a snip and slurp, right? Yeah, I think I think that's going to be the yeah. best way. Yeah. Sounds good. It's, this is an unidentified primnoid octocoral. Um, as soon as we'll, we touch it, I'll know a little bit more about it. It's probably going to be in the genus Norella. Okay. Let's, let's go for it. Let's do the thing. And I would say if we can take um, you know, yeah. the, the two biggest branches on the right-hand side of it, that would be ideal. Two biggest branches on the right-hand side. Yeah. Or, or a little bit off the top of, uh, of all the branches. I think would be fine, too.
It's small, so I would say you probably have to go for the majority of it. I might get a lot more than that just because it's so small. Okay. We've seen plenty more of these colonies so far on the dive, and we will. Um, so we're, we're permitted to do that perfectly. Yep. I'll so try and get a little, not so much, but. No, that's that's nice. Is that okay? Yeah, you can even get more. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. it's oh. on a rock. All right, let's go I don't think we'll be box. slurping. Forward box. Okay. And, uh. Lambda. There was a big colony of this just in the down down current side of the boulder. Yeah, nice. This is a, re a really nice opportunity. And which side? Sorry, Data? Lambda. Lambda? It's 127 now. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much. All the pieces. Yeah, that was that was nicely done. <laughs> Very good. Some of these um, these smaller corals are, are are cryptic. It's it's not easy to tell what they are because they don't have big profuse branching patterns that are easy to identify. And so, if we can collect some of the smaller pieces, this, this is really valuable for characterizing some of the maybe more newly settled. Uh, coral biology on the seamount landscape here. All right, I think uh, science is set for this spot. Science is set, Roger. Yes. Uh, ROV will let you get out ahead Thanks. again before we move. So again, a question for our ROV pilots, if it's possible to answer this one. Um, when doing maintenance on a HERC yesterday, there was a big heavy cylinder that some of our viewers, viewers noticed you were working with. And can you tell us what that cylinder was? <laughs> um, that was the, um, that was the power plant for the vehicle. That's the um, high voltage motor. It runs off a little over 2,500 volts. Um, it's a three-phase uh, synchronous motor. Uh, so it gets power from the transformer on the ship down, down through the wire. It spins um, at some multiple of 60 hertz. I forget how many poles it has. Um, and it drives the hydraulic pump. So that's the main pump on the vehicle that provides all the hydraulic pressure that spins all of the thrusters, provides pressure for the arm to function, allows us to drive the um, drawers in and out, things like that. So that is, that's the beating heart of the vehicle right there. If the um, main bottle is its brain, the motor is the pump, or the motor is the heart. Excellent, thank you. Very observant viewers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Busted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, are we doing heart surgery now? Can we say that? Um, it was a transplant. Transplant. Yeah. 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 <laughs> open, got a new heart. Open the, um, motor surgery. Yeah. Exactly. The um, <laughs> the actual opening of the of the heart um, will be done probably elsewhere. Okay. Um, we buy those or um, and keep. We have two of them, and we keep them repaired, and we'll have them rewound when they need it, and uh, they get lots of TLC. Cool. As a heart should. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh. These are some nice boulders. Yeah, I like these boulders. These are okay. Not as good as the beautiful boulder earlier, but... <laughs> the beautiful boulder. Uh, 
Um, Might okay. be a bamboo coral. So we've got, got a left. loop in the tether. Um, so let's uh, stop the ship and sort of... The ship, ship has not stopped, started moving. Oh, we're, beautiful, we're thank stopped. you. Yeah. So let me think about which direction this is. Looking at that right, or is that That's like a matter of tail, yeah. oh, okay? So that looks like it'll come out if you do, um, if you turn to uh, turn to port and come and back down, uh, turn to port and back and back towards the vehicle a bit or towards Atalanta a bit. Is that, would you, do you agree? That seems like the right, I think it's going to be turning to port. Yeah. Or we can, I, or I don't know. Or yeah. Just yeah. I think that's what it is. No. No. I don't. Uh, no. Uh, back the other way. It's almost as if I have to like come up and over the tether, and you know what I mean. Uh, I don't. Can like you put on uh, maybe auto depth? I think that will. Uh, psych, get out of that, and uh, you're in auto alt now. Uh, so do it on the autos page. help both of us here. Yeah, okay, let's try that. Okay, I have more, I have more confidence in that. Don't back up way too much. Nice. Beautiful. I just hope it like yeah, flips over. Yeah, it may you know, just take a to moment to come out. Uh, it still looks like it's. I, I think that help. I think that was the right direction to turn. Yeah. And so now I think the next move is to just drive ahead just slowly. Um, and off to, uh, off to port. Nice. Beautiful. Nicely done. Cool. Nicely done, Karen. Very nice. nice. Thanks for your help. Yeah. Um, that view is so nice to be able yeah, to see your tether. Yeah, it really is. Um, it still feels like there's something weird going on with the tether, but we'll just have to watch it and see. Obviously, that negative one and a half didn't work. So. Uh, All right, now I'm slowly just working my heading around so yeah, that we can carry okay. on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get back in the game. We'll be at 260 again. 260, thanks. I actually find some of that, like, blue water flying to be 
a little bit disorienting. And, mm. and yeah, for sure. But yeah, you did that super nicely. Thanks. Mm. We're getting a really good question in the chat. Somebody wants to know, are there protocols about sampling in areas where there are so few visible organisms? Um, what limitations are there? I'm gonna walk us through that, Steve. Yep, so we are uh, permitted to work in these waters under a special use permit that's issued by the uh, Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument, um, which is uh, jointly managed by NOAA and uh, Fish and Wildlife. And so there we are given a, a set of criteria that we have to follow about you know, numbers of species, you know, observed in the site or uh, within a region or area uh, before we're permitted certain collections. Um, we also have to try to reduce uh, impact for colonial species um, as much as possible. And so we've been observing those criteria for our uh, expedition. We also have um, limits on how many so total samples we can take per dive site. Uh, 20 biology samples, 20 geology samples, 6 water samples, and um, 5 push cores. Are those numbers the same for any type of uh, dives we might do outside of uh, the, the prim? In outside of the prim, those those rules would not apply. Yeah. RV, are we happy for a move? Yeah. Okay. I'd actually yeah. like to reset the DVL while we're paused there. Okay. Here we go. Uh, bridge now. Five zero meters two six zero. The dandelion, right there in that hole. Go for zoom. Oh yeah, nice, nice find. I know oh, the the cinecam is awesome for this because <laughs> it looks so dramatic uh, with the black background. Oh yeah, some of our viewers love these. The Steve's eye view. Dandelions. Yeah, I'm really enjoying using this camera That's awesome. and, and you know we had the DSC before this digital still camera yeah and uh, well we still do have it but um, not functioning right now and uh, right. that was useful but the interface was kind of clunky um, and it wasn't as clean as as the cinema cam uh, and it took really really great shots but uh, watching the the video stream was pretty granular it's kind of low, low resolution. How do the photos compare, like the actual product? Uh, I, I think they're pretty comparable. Okay. I mean, after they're color corrected and all that, mm -hmm. um, I think they're pretty good. But my understanding is we're only using a, a low resolution on the, on the cinema cam, so that will be stepped up gradually as we start to um, understand better the dynamics of, of data transfer from the cinema cam to the ship. Um, okay. So we're going to start testing different, um, I think we're doing 1080p images still right now, but or 1080 you know, pixels, uh, but we're, we'll slowly step up to like 4K and eventually 6K, but those images are going to be, um, you know, much more data intensive and we're not sure how that, how that transfer will work yet. 
me zoom in on just above the lasers on this uh, branchy bit. Zoom. Branchy bit. Yep. This looks looks like another. Oh, it's a. Uh, oh, it's a bryozoan. Okay. Just bryozoan, and that's a. Uh, looks coral-like, but it's a completely different group. Phylum bryozoa. Wait, do you say this is bryozoa? Yep. Branching? Yep. Obviously? <laughs> yep. Yeah, there's a, a fair number of branching bryozoa. We collected some last year. I was looking through our sample logs. Um, so if anyone out there is interested in the bryozoa, there's some materials that probably need to be worked on at the MCZ from this area. We're seeing a lot more corals, though, as we start to approach the steeper parts of this slope. There was a large boulder just prior to um, seeing that other coral we just collected on top of the boulder that was covered with that same species uh, on the down current side. We're seeing a lot of uh, mostly primnoids very, very sparse number of bamboo corals in this area. It's, it's typical. I wouldn't call this dive really high density b by any means. And I'm trying to, I'm wondering why that might be. Um, the substrate seems to be stable enough. The currents are adequate, I would say. The depths are certainly shallow enough. Uh, we're just not seeing the density that maybe we might expect at other sites. So it's unclear why that's happening. But we've had um, pretty pretty good luck in finding new species of corals with uh, most collections we've been making over this year and last year. Uh, there have been a few known species uh, that we've collected last year, uh, as well as this year, but the known species uh, were few and the, you know, proportionally higher number of new s potentially new species uh, from our collections last year and this year. Go for zoom. Love the color of this one. Yep. It's a cucumber. Synelected. Family synelected, eh? This one is very reminiscent of... Um, there's, there's very small differences in sea cucumbers. It's often difficult to identify morphologically, but this one resembles um, something like Hansenothuria. Can I go away, please? Thank you. and Gabby are getting shout outs on the chat for that um, getting that kink out of the tether a while back. They said that was yeah. like watching a ROV ballet. <laughs> <laughs> And then somebody else wants to know, are we able to stop and do an in-depth study if warranted? I'm not quite sure with that maybe just like doing this one seamount in depth for two or three days maybe I'm, I'm wondering if that's what they're asking yeah it, i mean it's possible um you know either you know, on a small scale to stop the vehicle and and do a, a, a very detailed study of a small area um or to spend a few days spend studying a site but the goals of this exploration mission are to survey a wide range of sites more so because um, we can get more geological data that helps support understanding the, the origins and development of the 
tectonic forces in this area by sampling more seamounts. Uh, just the same, you know, we don't. It would be great, um, and I think it's very much needed from a biological perspective to identify um, uh, patterns of biodiversity across the seamount landscape, but uh, it would probably require a lot of time to do so, and, and maybe this ROV is not the most efficient way of doing that. There might be other uh, more efficient ways of doing that kind of survey, for example, using AUVs uh, that would be able to survey uh, a larger part of the seamount more efficiently, provide some image data that you could then use targeted sampling like with an ROV to go back and, and collect things you can't identify. And can you explain what is an AUV for anyone who hasn't heard of that before? Yep, that's uh, going to be an uh, autonomous underwater vehicle. So it's a robot, a drone, if you will, for exploring the deep sea. like sunrises looking nice out there on the wire cam. Mm. Okay. How's the bow looking? Let's see how bow is. Looks good out there. I'm gonna, I might throw that up in a sec. Oh, there's a fish, fish tail. <laughs> I'm gonna sit on my cam. What kind of fish is that? Oh, in a sec. That's a cuskiel. I'm pretty sure that's a canthonus. Um, although, no, it might be different actually. The cuskiels have um, identification for the cuskiels is based on fin structure. Um, so getting good shots of the head and then slowly migrating back down the tail uh, is the best way to get imagery for that. But it can be sometimes difficult, as this one showing an uncooperative. It is kind of zipping all over the place. It has very long uh, pectoral fins, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna throw up cam bow real fast. It's pretty gorgeous out there. Cool. On channel three? Yes. It's pretty angular stuff. Yeah. It's uh, a lot smaller than some of the routes we've seen mm. up to this oh, point. Yeah. I wonder if we're starting to get into it's the gorgeous uh, more carbonate area. I'm wondering, yeah, yeah how we'll, you know, maybe this this could just be mud too. Yeah, mud can be angular when it breaks off and like this. Though that mudstone we collected on the previous dive, that was a that was very nice rounded rock almost. Interesting how like suddenly sedimented this area is. Mm. Yeah. We might be in the shadow uh, of kind of this, these ridges to the north and south coming up this, uh, I don't know what you would call this, scarp kind yeah. of in the center yeah. between these ridges. We're kind of buried deep into the side of the seam out here. Anthemastis uh, colony. Maybe a lot of carbon debris. Sorry. Mushroom coral. And so that might actually restrict flow conditions. That kind of makes it harder for a lot of larger colonies, especially, to persist. There she is. I think. Um, What's this, Steve? Uh, it's a anthemastinous mushroom coral. Cool. If we do uh, end up topping this seamount before the end of our watch, I, I would imagine the next watch, if they have time, will go down and maybe do another transect up. Um, so we're not 
We don't need to artificially slow ourselves down for any reason. Okay. Or okay. they might want to cruise on the top, whatever they choose. I'm not seeing really strong evidence of like very distinctive carbonate. Maybe. Yeah, it's like um it's very dusted <laughs> on these rocks. Definitely more so than what we've been seeing. I would take a guess that that's mostly carbonate sediment. Uh, yeah, on top of the rock, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why would you say that, Nick? What's the... Um, um, oh, that's a sea cucumber. Okay. <laughs> mostly because there's not a lot of uh, land around to create any type of quartz sediment or silica sediment. Cool. Uh, that would erode and run off into the oceans like you would see in coastal environments. I thought you might. <laughs> Our online viewers are impressed with the sunrise. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Sunrise it's a good one. Nice. Yeah, I mean, the sunrises and sunsets out here are kind of... Uh, phenomenal <laughs> Splendid. especially last night like the sun was just lighting up yeah. the like giving these clouds a glow they were like a very glowy pink orange yeah. color and it was just hanging out for like 30 minutes it was we'll really want to go nice. straight up this without too much pause so one interesting thing about the seamounts that we're finding in, in the Johnson Atoll region and kind of all scattered all throughout the Pacific Ocean is that they're actually not created from um, tectonic forces like you would see around the ring of fire that surrounds uh, the Pacific Rim. Instead, they're thought What's to have uh, right been now? created from uh, mantle plumes, uh, which create these hot spots that record uh, plate motion. And they also give us a better understanding of uh, deep mantle processes um, that uh, offer a unique look inside uh, the mantle yeah, itself. I think so. uh, let me see this one last swipe across the across it to see if we've topped out. One last swipe with the sonar. Sorry. Yeah. And some of these mantle plumes are thought to Let's extend hold. Hold down to the uh, base of the uh, core mantle boundary. Hold position. Around 2,800. Um, kilometers below the surface. So very deep, very deep sourced magma sources, um, which is really amazing that, you know, you could have melting that, that far below the Earth's surface that that penetrate the, uh, the plates themselves. Uh, Atalanta is starting to see over it now. Cool. That's great. It's a great shot in Atalanta right now. That's cool. Yeah, oh, it yeah. is. And that checks out we are reaching the top of uh, this scarp. I thought that's what we were calling it. We're in good shape now. Great. Oh, yeah, there's all the corals now. Of course. There right at the top. Well, Science, we did just, uh, we're, we're holding the ship at the moment, so if there's anything you want to take a closer look at, we got plenty of time. Let's, um, yeah, no, no instructions at the moment. Roger, free for all. <laughs> Anywhere but down. <laughs> Anywhere but down. Or or up. Just kind of like up-ish, I guess. There's your sheet flow again. Yep. So this is the tippy top of the seamount. It is the. Getting close. Getting close. Okay. 
the flatty top. The flatty. It depends flatty on top. how you define oh. top of the sea. <laughs> what is that? Uh, Amphipod. Yes. It's greeting us. Yeah. Welcome to, you've, you've made it to the top almost. <laughs> Oh, it's so cute. Wow. It's just following <laughs> along. <laughs> <laughs> what is that in that hole? Mm, looks like some sponge rubble. Ah. I want to find a bone so bad. Botryoids. 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 Is that? <laughs> can, you now, can you make that into a noun? Well, I mean, it's, it's just the same thing, just bigger, right? Unless there's sure. a new name for yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I like bulbous. Bulbous. Mm. If anyone's curious, it's been 150 meters since our last rock. <laughs> Interesting. Don't say. <laughs> Don't say. <laughs> Just if anyone <laughs> happens to care. <laughs> I'll keep my eye out. So the uh, people in the chat want to know, do we ever dive at the same site? Like, do we ever do repeat dives in one area, or do we try to just disperse and spread out? It's really dependent on the mission objectives uh, and the crew's objectives. Um, it's possible to do multiple dives at one seamount, yep. And if we did that, we would probably try to do complementary or comparative uh, approaches so you know if, say we do one dive in the north then maybe the next dive might be in the south if it's a very large feature just to look at different aspects of the geomorphology of the site mm -hmm. uh, we also might do overlapping depth um, transects so uh, you know, perhaps a shallower dive followed by a deeper dive that overlaps somewhere where the shallower dive started So that we can a have a continuous depth distribution oh, transit. It looks like it. It's like a dead over. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We haven't seen any of that size for a while. Huge one. Go for zoom. Oh, this little valley is like a little sponge graveyard. Oh, no. Yeah. What oh, is this? that must have been huge. Wow. wow. Dusty sponge. Dusty sponge. <laughs> Sad sponge. Dead and dusty. Yep. Furred. Dead. Dead furred. More often than not, it's it's common for corals too. They they get undermined. Either they grow too large, and their base can't support. Uh, yep. Yeah, another one. Their base can't support. Uh, their weight, or some. Bio, uh, bio rotor comes along and, and maybe grazes down tissue around the base or maybe even skeletal material around the base and that undermines its ability to support uh, support itself. Is there a little anthemasis there? To oh, the okay. Uh, bottom off there. There. Looks like there's a lot of these sponges. sponges yeah, there. I wonder yeah. what happened to like wipe out all these sponges like in this specific spot. Go for zoom, please. They're definitely persistent, and it's it's a common observation throughout uh, this unit, as well as um, points further north and oh. even down to the... Steve, top left. Yep. What is that? Uh, it looks like a hydroid of some type. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. It looks so different than anything else we've seen. Sorry for interrupting you. If we do see some more of these mushroom corals, I'm keeping count. Uh, considering sampling them, but they seem to be common enough that we don't need to stop and sample them uh, now. Is it a particular species of interest, or no? It's uh, never been collected in this area. But they're often overlooked. Oh, look at that! Interesting. It's an interesting overhang. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Beautiful. That's Gabby, you're really cute. very interesting. Okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah, we can Especially in the cinema cam, it's very yeah. dramatic yeah, right there. Looks Everybody like say, table with bye sunrise. Bye sunrise. <laughs> bye sunrise. <laughs> can you go back to the cinema? <laughs> so what's going on here? Is this a sheet flow overhanging some more loosely consolidated uh, Yeah, I, I would flow? guess I would guess it was uh, a secondary sheet flow that kind of uh, maybe came over, solidified, broke off a little bit. 
then had some little pillows growing on top. It's it's really interesting morphology. The secondary sheet, that's always the one that I can't make the bed with. Mm -hmm. Oh, my crinoid <laughs> closed up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, you have the primary down. sheet and then the secondary sheet. Is that how geologists yeah. make their bed yeah. in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> Trying my material here. Give me some slack. <laughs> um, so somebody wants to know, what is the most interesting geological feature that science has seen so far on this cruise or dive? I think some of the best views, which we uh, kind of underappreciate, come from At Atlanta. Uh, when you get to see how massive uh, some of these structures really are and, and kind of a zoomed out look. Uh, I, I really find those very interesting. Um, besides that, you know, like this right here, this little scour that we're seeing in between. Um, this is cool. Yeah, wow. there's just Can we? Uh, some of the boulders we've come across are, are really nice. Um, Can it's I hard to really pin really on? on one single event or feature. Action. Yeah, this is cool. Looks like a thin layer of crust going on top. Wow, look at that. Science, anything we want to do here before uh, putting in another move? Anything we want to do here? Uh, well, we might be able to collect something down here. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know, uh, oh, maybe really? over here, if that's possible. Yeah. I don't know if you've got a little current going on, but. Some of our viewers are wondering, um, just a moment there, we were seeing the top of the um, seamount, and they're wondering if that was all crust, do you think, or? It could be. Um, that, was, that was pretty thick for it to be crust. Um, it could be completely reworked uh, and altered, kind of like we've seen in some of our samples that are really thick. Um, I, I wouldn't go so far as to call it pure fer ferromanganese, though it seems like it's, it's, it's had a lot of iron precipitation in there or alteration even. Uh, you still see a thin rind of ferromanganese crust around those rocks that are only a few centimeters thick. And what we were just looking at was at least, you know, uh, more than double that size. So I, I, I don't think that it would be pure uh, ferromanganese crust, but it could be. Uh, all right, Steve, it's your turn to pick a rock. Uh, I'm not qualified to make that no? decision. Okay, <laughs> all right. Oops. Oh, we got some loose rocks here. Um, decisions, decisions, decisions. Choose wisely. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, that too big? That yeah. would have to go in a large large outside box. It's possible. We can do a different one if needed. Oh, a dust kicked out there. Maybe instead... Is this one loose, do you think? I'm going to poke it. For any of our viewers online who are wondering. Sorry, Nick, can you point that out again? Yeah, I want to see if we can poke this one first. Uh, okay. It's a little bit more reasonably sized than that first one I was pointing at. Our current depth is 2,104.9 meters, and the water temperature is 2 degrees Celsius. We are very close to, if not at the top of this uh, unnamed seamount that we've been exploring for the past few hours. Can I get a zoom video? 
If it's easier to go for this larger rock, we can we can go for that instead. It's definitely loose. This appears to be stuck in there. Oh no! Nope. Oh, there we go. Thanks, right video. Oh. Well, we know it has mass. Yeah. <laughs> Bigger than I expected, but should fit. No, it's fine. I'll fit in the out outside uh, e, e or F boxes, just just nicely. Okay, let's see if it Does not want to play along. I love how billowy the sediment looks. I don't know, something about it is so yeah. Satisfying to me. <laughs> Oops. Uh -oh. oh, that's oh. the problem. No. Squishy rocks. Bad yeah. Rocks. Okay. Okay. Put it bye bye. Back. Incompatible. Good thing I didn't pick that one. <laughs> <laughs> Was there anything else that you were? Yeah, using? we were looking at this one. Okay. That's Steve's rock. <laughs> Okay, Steve, All right, write open. that down in the log. Make sure we uh, yeah, yeah. get that Steve one right. Rock. Steve gets cut open. See what happens. I, uh, I'm getting squishy vibes from this one, too. <laughs> yeah. Rock. Yeah. Call it Steve Rock. Rock Steve. No, sure. Uh, what do you think the size on that is? About 20 to 20 centimeters. 20 centimeters. Is that all you need there? Data? Muted. Or muted. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't. The hear. mic is muted. Uh, do you. Where do you want this? Starboard bow box aft. Aft. F, big one. F, big one. Yeah. Roger. Thanks. Are we full wide video? We are. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Sample one, two, eight. Question yep. mark? Yep. One, two, eight. Did say push core? Sample. Did you say push core? No, question mark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, huh. Not Can sure. you get me one more camera? Definitely not doing push core, sir. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, the other starboard work. bio box camera? Is there another rock in F? Uh, there is a scoop in F. There is a rock in E, though, so that's why. It's not going to fit with the scoop. It can go in, F, in E. Just there is, is a rock in I am afraid it might not fit in there with that big round scoop. OK, we can go for E. Yeah.
Very nice, thank you. Yeah. Anything else you want to do here, Science? Uh, I'm all set here. What you go is all set here. Great. That rock was hoping we would choose it instead, apparently. Yep. It's just, just falling, falling for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's undateable. Oh. Undercoated love. <laughs> Can't have them all, Nick. Can't get them all. <laughs> So you're just a tiny bit low. Um, I, I don't know if it's something, it's a setting on mine or whatever. How about now? Yeah, that's better. Yes, Great. thanks. Bridge now. Definitely got a lot of promising samples on this dive. We'll see what happens uh, a little later on this afternoon when we slice them open. Slice them open. Open our presents. Bridge, I can see you're uh, trying to talk, but I'm unable to hear you. Can we uh, pick up a little bit and kind of scan around? left and right see what's in the area yeah I'll come up just trying to get it get a like are are we are we summited here or is there more up that's what I just wanted to try and figure out it's got sediment Summit. to the right so that's pretty clear that's consistent with the bathy uh -huh. so we don't probably don't want to go that way And probably more like yeah that way or even southwest. We don't want to get too far up onto the seamount summit, so maybe lateraling along this contour actually would be the better idea. Do you feel comfortable with that? Yes, I feel comfortable. Okay, so can we lateral south along this contour? Along yeah, the sure. contour. Okay, um, we can. Uh, I'm having trouble getting to the bridge. Standby. Pretty thick sediment over here. I'm surprised we're not seeing some more. Uh yeah, I, there there are pockets. I, you can definitely see up to the north when we were scanning around. There's this uh -huh. is this is sediment. This is all sediment. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and so, so RV if we go south is here, 185, thanks. towards Roger. nine, we'll probably end up seeing more of this type of terrain, which is preferable. Shelf is kind of cool. Yeah. Yep. There's a Walteria sponge on top. Wow, that is really cool. How, okay, did, that, how did that even happen? <laughs> I wonder. It's a good question. You're supposed to know everything, Nick. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's, uh, oh it's a shadow. Never mind. I've been having visions of this gelatinous unknown organism for the 
It was cold like yesterday. Yeah, like it's just haunting it, you. It I'm pops telling up you. In my, <laughs> in my field of view, thinking it's uh, <laughs> something you, else, but it's not. It's so did you dream uh, about ominous. it last night? No. Just yeah, you did. Can't no. quite grab it. No. You can tell I us. Slept Steve, very it's well last night. <laughs> One eight five. I'm not that worried about it. I know that once we barcode it, it will tell us its secrets. Mr. Bond. <laughs> Mr. Bond. DNA doesn't lie. It's just confusing sometimes. So there's a rock behind you, the BSR. Just come up. Okay. Uh, do we have a move on the ship? Yeah, at 185. Okay, so can you just come up? There's a Yeah, I see rise. it in the yeah. this cam. Okay. You know, it's been haunting me since yesterday. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. <laughs> oh. The shark. Oh. Yeah, we saw a oh, shark. It's kind of wild. There was just like a little canyon in there. Yeah, uh, that's really cool. Yeah, let's follow this feature if we can. Yeah, that's cool. Still looks volcanic, right? Yeah, yeah. I, as far as I know, uh, again, I haven't really seen the top of too many of these guillots quite yet uh, so far. But yeah, these these little plateaus are are, are really interesting. I can know more about I'm them. I'm surprised there's not much. It, usually, when we have outcroppings like this, it's uh, there's a lot of animals attached to the underhangs because mm -hmm. some or overhangs because you can get um, currents. Yeah. You know, microcurrents running along the... That was kind of one of my thoughts, that maybe those currents could help kind of scour that, that, that area, but I, I don't think it'd be strong enough. Mm -hmm. Shrimp? Oh yeah, there's some uh, there's some foraging going on here. There's a halosaur yeah. and a shrimp. Is it on its side? And something there. I can't tell what that is. It looks like something floaty. It has a shadow. Really nice ripples. Oh, for zoom. I think that's a. Uh, oh. No, I don't know what that is. What is that? It's a gelatinous something with a. Yeah. It's it's moving. It's not attached to the benthos. Oh. It's Interesting. Oh, maybe a tinafore. I just saw it. Something. Uh, refract. Oh, tinafore. Yeah. yeah, I can see it. Mm. The ri uh, yeah. iridescence. Yeah. When the laser hits it. Looks tinafore. Oh, and actually the shadow. You can tell. Interesting. It's yeah, very low contrast. Uh, I've never seen one with the black. Um, That's really cool. Cylinder in there. Sometimes tinafores, yeah, can have um, parasitic organisms inside oh, as well I that have uh, Thank you. different contrast. At the base of this rock, there's little um, pebbles. Uh huh. Okay. They almost oh. look biogenic. That's interesting. Pebbles. Yeah, uh, right under the lasers. There's little piles of um, spheres oh, right that look here? like they're made out of sediment. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Oh, there's some of the foreground too. I see some sponge rubble, but I, I see what you're talking oh, about. I was thinking there were some sort of debris or rubble, detritus. Uh, oh, you know what they could be? It looks like fecal casts of a sea cucumber or something. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so... Perfectly spherical like that? Yeah, yeah, they can be. Okay, well... <laughs> haven't had a poop zoom in a while, so... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right. I don't want to cruise. <laughs> well, they, they come out as 
as coils, right? You know, but they degrade and they fall apart. Thanks for trying to make it sound better. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a circle of life. Karen, Gabby, and Samantha, you're getting a shout out from Scott from Monterey Bay. Awesome. That's great. Really cool ripple patterns. Yeah. yeah, do you remember Scott Hansen? You've worked with him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Totally. Yeah, he was out like a few years ago. Mm -hmm. He's my esteemed colleague now oh, at Monterey excellent. Bay Area Research Institute. That's awesome. Uh, do you mind if I take bubble? No. Bridge now. Uh, five zero meters, one eight five. What was it that you said earlier, the matrix of goo and ooze? Yep. Is that it? Yep. Yep. Somebody said that the sea cucumber poo that we just saw is definitely going to contribute to that. That would definitely <laughs> be part of that. Yep. <laughs> Bring it all together. Yeah. Yeah, full circle. Oh, yeah, there's a fish to the right-hand side. To the right. And it's a, everyone's fan favorite. Oh, oh, oh it's trying away. to run away. Come back. Oh. Oh. What is it? Ooh. Oh my god. Those are some strange <laughs> maneuvers. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Swimming backwards. Anyone got any guesses yet? I'm guessing uh, it's terrified of the ROV and trying to <laughs> escape as quickly as possible. This is what we've been waiting to I see. Oh, come on, you all know what Come's this back. is. What is it? Uh, John. Is it a oh, I heard it. John Cops. Oh, John Cops. <laughs> what is it? John Cops. John Cops. Come back, please. John come back. Come back. One of these small juvenile. Oh, because they're gray when they're juveniles. They're darker, yeah. yeah. Dark, uh, dark purple or dark red sometimes. The abyss. We finally found the abyss. One. Where's so it at the mouse too? Um, science wanted to lateral along this contour at um, one eight five. So yeah. Oh, baby went bye bye. That was a really cool viewing of it, though. So yeah, when they're babies or juvenile, they're kind of like that grayish color, and then as they get to be a bit more mature, then that's when they're more of an orangish red. But yeah, that was a Chana Cops. I think they just want to stay along the, yeah. the cliff face. Right? Cool. Go for Zoom. a brittle star or an ophiroid on an old sponge stock. Probably an ophiacanthid. Mm, that's cool. 
we have the scope to look at kind of the down side of this, uh, downslope side of this big boulder we're passing over now? Yeah. Okay. Like. Sort of like this? Yeah. Just and then you, you may just strafe along it. Yeah, perfect, exactly. There seems to be more stuff here. Like there's a, some corals as well as some bamboo or, or uh, the mushroom corals down deeper. A couple of things we haven't seen yet. There's some stalked crinoids, mushroom corals, more individuals of this coral colony we sampled uh, a while back. This is quite an impressive cliff face here. Yeah. Is there a term for the top of a flat top seamount? Summit? Well, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Um. <laughs> it is. Oh, what's that? Ooh, beautiful uh, sponge. Yeah, I guess, um, would the summit be like the shallowest point? Or would it be? Yeah. I'm wondering, like, what's point? the edge? Yeah. The pancake. Crest? Rim? I don't know. Something like that. Rim makes sense, yeah. Yeah. This is beautiful. Nice yellow, so, whoa. yellow oh sponge. Yeah. There we go. I would call that toasted coconut. <laughs> but I think it's a polyopagon. Almost breakfast time. Go for Zoom. I call it grilled cheese. Oh, oh yeah. That's true. Oh. It, but is it evolved? <laughs> yes. Evolved milk. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Uh, I, I, that's, I'm going for them. That's what it doesn't for good. that name. <laughs> somebody, looks like somebody took a bite out of the top of it right there. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. 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 It's really interesting to see the structures holding it to the rock, too. Yeah. Polyopagon. Well, this is the probably the most dense biology we've seen all watch. Yeah. Congrats. Probably all dive. The last group didn't uh, didn't see much in the way of biology. Camera, is that the bubble? I don't, yeah. What is that? There we go. Okay, thanks. I must have bumped it. Sorry about that. No, no, no. Uh, it just looked like it was looking at something interesting and I couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's an interesting little cavern in there. Oh, there's like a coral in. Go for zoom. Uh, in, inside the crevice, yeah, yeah that's really cool. Alteria yeah. sponge that's and the Chrysogorgia colony. With a uh, squat lobster, but it's going to be very tough to see in detail. Where? Cup yeah. coral down here in the bottom. That's the squat lobster inside oh, there. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. 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 Wow. And then it's got this question mark Walteria. Karen, can I do Interesting a Interesting why they like the crevices, though. Uh, I never yes. understood that. Someone so says they hope that we have toasted coconut ice cream today. Oh my god, that would be <laughs> the best. Yeah. Yeah. Another unpopular opinion. What? I don't like coconut. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and second that motion. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, it's an Arctic Gorgia. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. I know. <laughs> I love coconut water, though. But uh, 
it, so then is it a texture Somebody thing? Yeah. yeah, I think it's a texture thing. Okay. Kind of like sea urchin. Love the flavor, can't do the texture. Mm. That's not normally something that people use as an example. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Toasted marshmallow. I like that better. Cool. The real question is, who here burns their marshmallows? Uh, I want to know. I do. On purpose? Yes. Yeah. You know, some people like toast them slowly, and then some people just want to go for the the quick burn. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that approach. Me neither. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> yeah, you got to get the inside nice and gooey, the and then the toasted. Soma. This move is uh, ending. Summer sponge. And we'll let her get ahead before the next one. This chip move is ending. Okay. So we'll just let you get ahead before I put in another one. Thank you. Mushroom coral are yeah. all over the place. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I don't think this is a that's that's not a good one to sample. But maybe the next one we see, since we have our our quota of observed uh, mushroom corals, we'd like to collect one, but not this one. Okay. Not the one uh, in, in a in the in the crevice. crevice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like a challenge. I appreciate you, Steve. <laughs> yeah. I like the challenge. <laughs> Um, but not I, that one. how do you sample uh, anthemastis? Uh, I would, you know, stick the hose on it and then just kind of knock scrape, it off. Yeah. Scrape and slurp. Scrape and slurp. Yeah. Are they sealed on like an anemone? How did no, I do this? No, it's it's right? kind of like um, <laughs> if you if you you know used a very uh, like like Elmer's glue on a. <laughs> On a cotton ball, kind of thing. So <laughs> it'll it'll break <laughs> off, uh, Dried but it's not like a it's not like epoxy strong. It's just like it's kid it's kid gl kid glue strong. Okay. Uh, Very specific. Yeah. Kid, kid glue, glue strong. strong. Yeah. I like that. Elmer's nice. Glue, yeah. Everyone used that when they were a kid, right? Yeah. Yep. It's not very sticky, but it's good enough for some paper art or something. But the, the fiber, so it's very leathery, kind of the, the mushroom part, it's very leathery. So it's 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 uh, not going to tear very easily, but it, it should just knock right off. Such a dramatic cliff here. I love it. I just feel like I could just stand right there on that little lookout I can't because it is very deep and I'd be crushed. It's <laughs> true. Yeah. So maybe I won't. But if you could. If I could, I would. Yeah. And oh yes, wow. scrape and slurp are the technical Look words for sampling. Ah. Very cool. Wow. Amazing. It's what like a night and day. <laughs> yeah, everybody together now. Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lot of wow. analogy. Can we uh, take a peek at some of these maybe and see who's yeah. home? Amazing. Go, go for Zoom. Put on a couple more Atalanta lights just as a trial. Okay, thanks. Nope, Ooh, can't see yeah. the tether. Possibly no tether. We're wireless. Wireless, wireless yes. <laughs> Love it. Bluetooth arc. <laughs> so you might say we've evolved 
Oh boy. Is, this, is that, is that going to be the new? Uh, Have you learned the nothing. new sub aerial? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Samantha, do we have a ship moving on right now? Negative. Okay. What do we have going on here? Yeah, that's a. Uh, so under the lasers, that's a primnoid octocoral with uh, some. I, I think that's the same colony we sampled actually. So that another mm -hmm. another individual. Based on the branching pattern, suggests the same. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'm neglecting my duties of cinema camera. Very little sediment buildup, very dark iron manganese coating is apparent. Someone says it looks like an undersea coral coated dragon's head, and I must agree. Wow. Yeah. Now it does. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so I think this structure might just be a pillar. A pillar? Mm -hmm. Like, look at that. Oh my gosh. And yeah. uh, Adelaide. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is cool. Wow. Oh, or th they could just be a shadow too, but yeah. I like pillar. Oh. So Let's go with that. Sounds dramatic. Alrighty. But a, a lot of a lot these of small structure. circles on the rocks wow. suggest that these corals or some corals have been growing here for some time, and when they die, the the branch, you know, the axis part of the branch of the colony falls off, and the base is left over, very heavily calcified. So, yeah, probably uh, either Chrysogorgia or or Primnoid, Chrysogorgia or Primnoid bases. Most of these. Okay. I guess in about 10, 15 minutes or so, we'll get some feedback about maybe if if these could be could something be else other than volcanic. Mm -hmm. You can see in the sonar where the next on. structure is, mm -hmm. about 15 meters away on your port. So we have 15 minutes to find that columnar basalt we were talking about. Aww. So we uh, we can look good for the next <laughs> next launch. We can do it. I believe in us. All right. So somebody saw a dragon. Somebody else saw a slice of cake. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that too. And someone's wondering, will we ever mic a scientist in the lab room? Um, I don't know if we will do that necessarily for the SPL, what you're watching right now, but um, sometimes we do ship to shore interactions. It's not very entertaining. It's a, it's a lot of discussion and throwing around a lot of names of identifications of things and numbers and, and label, you know, codes and in the lab it's, room? It's not, it's not really all that exciting. Or the wet room? I, w I mean, I wouldn't tune in, but... <laughs> That's I, very I surprising to hear you say, Steve. I would say it's exciting, but not entertaining. Yeah. yeah. I would tune in. You can watch yeah. without our audio. You can just imagine <laughs> what we're talking imagine about. Imagine what we're saying. <laughs> We're probably just speaking in Latin the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what's happening. Uh, did you say upsetting? Just chanting spells. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Incantations. So the real magic happens. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Science spells. Yeah, of course. Yeah. What else? Yeah. I like it. I mean, you could also, during a dive, keep track of all the samples we collect and the sample numbers, and then as they come up, you can keep your own <laughs> science log <laughs> watching in the wet lab, I suppose. Can we zoom on? Um, it's just coming into view now, just above us. I've seen a few of these so far, and I don't think we've gotten a really good zoom. Uh, this stock right here, yeah. crinoid. Yeah. It has the ability to close up, which was interesting. I saw a couple of them snapshot um, when we are passing them down deeper.
koffers in. Consult the, the guide on this. Crinoids are not my specialty. So for crinoids, there are stocked and unstocked. Um, do the stocked ones ever become unstocked? Like, is it like a, a point where they become mature enough or something and they break off and they're free swimming? No, they will always be stocked. This one tentatively ID'd as Bathycrinus spa. Uh, it's been observed several times, mostly within the Johnson Atoll area. Um, well, why don't we go for it? Since we don't have a good idea on this, can we sample the stocked crinoid? Yeah. It's going to probably have to go in the forward box. Yeah. It's kind of, it's not a very steady ground, but yeah, for sure, we can try. There are oof, six observations of this from Johnson Atoll, and they none of them have identifications on them. And we've seen several many, many of them down deeper. And if it does close up, it'll tell us it's probably the same one as those. Same species. Um, is Do you have a sense of whether it's going to be neutral or sinky? It's It'll be sinky, but okay. not like the rocks we collect. Okay. Gently sinky. <laughs> gotcha. Great. A slight sink. In the box would be better better too because uh, they have a tendency to the arms tend to um, pop off uh, if they are stressed out. You want it in the forward box or the yeah. starboard box? Okay. Forward, yeah. Right. So maybe somewhere, uh, you know, five six inches below the the arms. Oh, we're losing pressure again. I just saw it dip to like 1,500. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Oh, no, uh, that's actually, it's my fault. Uh, uh, yeah. I, didn't that was, I just had the jaws stuck on something. Let me, I'll just give you a view. Uh, that's kind of what was scraped off. Yeah. Yeah, I said okay, it. that's what it was. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry about that. that's my no. bad. Oh, oh, I'll I'll just I should have seen the jaws. Okay. I'm just gonna like yeah, go right. to port and strafe. Yeah, I'll yeah. Strafe yeah. to port and fuck okay. it. Here we go. I'll give you the porch again to look at. I'll try this again. So the the ID on this one, I'm, I'm so sorry. I should be looking at the jaws when I pick it up. Nice. I've knocked a coral over that way before. It's very frustrating. I come in a little, and I'm just gonna change my heading so it gives you a better. Yeah. I'm gonna. Okay. Sampling up by the light bar. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> Great use of the word straight, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. I don't one. know what that means, actually. You yes. never played video games? Strafe left yeah. and right? Yeah. yeah, I guess not a lot. <laughs> okay. Just just Stra this video game? <laughs> yeah, just this is the only video game <laughs> that I play. <laughs> the ultimate video game. It's quite it's a the good video, video game. game. Okay. Okay, were you going to put that in the chat, Steve? Yeah. Okay. Is that still, is that rock still in your way? No, I don't think so. Uh. Oh, yeah, there it, it might goes. hit my funny button. Close up a little bit. Oh, yeah. This is 129 now. Copy 129, thanks. Ooh, this is going to be a weird gangly one. Go blind. Blind grab.
Nice. Oh. What a beautiful oh, snag. Okay. That's great. We can put the the top end in the forward box and then just like clip off what we don't need or what doesn't okay. fit, if that's fine. So in the Omega side. Okay, so that should be the camera fully retracted and the tool tray out. Okay. Look down. I don't know if I dare use bubble backwards. It's been a long time oh. since I've done that, but uh, <laughs> I might. Uh, which side are we going in? Omega. The Omega. Right, right side. Okay. Starboard. I'll just wait until we can see it. Things move slowly down here. Very slowly. Oh my gosh, look at my yeah, pressure. Yeah, it's diving, yeah. Oh. It's b we've gone the whole watch without it diving, though. Yeah, that's been good. Something to be thankful for, for sure. I might actually need to watch the elbow rather than the backwards box. It's a very tight spot. All right, how about that? Okay. People are curious if we get to study the creatures very soon after they come back to the surface. And the answer is yes. Um, so we bring the ROV up with all of the samples collected and then immediately they get transferred to the wet lab that we have on the ship and they get processed and um, stored properly. Yeah, so it's a very immediate process. Nice job. Touch right in. Extends you. Can you look down a little bit more just to see if it tries to flop out? Oh, OK. Uh, that way I can just do some quick stuffing. OK. Yeah, now you can close up. Um, well, since we're here, can we do a Niskin bottle in this area too? Yeah. Since we've seen uh, a fair yes. bit of uh, biology, Retract. probably the most of the dive, we'll do a Niskin bottle in this general area and see what what comes up. Actually, sorry. And that should bring us to watch change. By in this general area, do you mean right here? Right here. Great. This uh, specific area? And what's your preferred Niskin number? One. One. Okay. One. Uh, okay. Okay, one is the top one. Purple, okay. So here we're seeing a different type of sampling method. We're going to be using something called a Niskin bottle to collect a water sample of this area. I'm going to see if I can do this without opening the jaws. And inside of that Niskin bottle, once the water is collected, um, mainly we're going to be using that to look at something called eDNA or environmental DNA. So the idea is the organisms that live in this area are naturally shedding skin cells or any type of fecal matter, anything like that, that has DNA oh, involved. I think that's it. Nice, yeah, right on. Nice. 
Yeah, I think that's the move. Instead of getting those gangly jaws all open like it was before. Yeah. So definitely in this area, we have Anthemastus, Norella, Carsagorcha, and maybe Candidella. Uh, but that Candidella also is very reminiscent of Norella calamus. Mm -hmm. So at least uh, we're going to put three of those genera in this area. And I know we do have sequences for most of those, so we should be able to run those against our genetic reference library and determine if we're getting hits from those specimens in this area. Interestingly, there are very few bamboo corals here, which so this is a really useful, um, useful water sample record. All right, lovely. I'd like to reset the DVL. That's okay. Oh, sure. Okay. And Steve, do you have time to talk a little bit about how it works to process eDNA? Um, is it like a manual process, or is there some way that it's a, it's a a bit of, a bit more automatic or automated? There are um, automatic samplers that have come online. Um, to do water sampling and filtration at depth, but um, I think N Nautilus might be using some of those later in the season, uh, but we use the surface filters uh, for this work. All right, thank you. All righty, everyone. So it's that time for our watch to change. So this has been the four to eight crew, and next is eight to 12. So in just a few minutes here, you're gonna be hearing Stephanie as you all continue to explore this Hello. unnamed G-mount. Thank you and see you again soon. Bye. Spot. It is a really, we'll uh, find another. That's, I mean, if you put it there.
Hello, back row. Hello, front row. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey, hello. Good morning. I heard we're sampling the impossible hello. coral. Yeah, let's do this. Where is it? Is it down here in the corner here? Yep. All right. Why is it the impossible coral? That's what I'm wondering, too. It's impossible to get. How are we getting it? <laughs> Slurp or... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, what do you say? Swept the best way to get this thing? The coral? Snip. Mushroom coral? Slurp? Snip. Snip. Snip, snip and box, snip yes. and slurp. We can do anything we put our minds to. What is science putting its mind to? Oh, oh. You getting the coral. Right, so, but for real though, are we snipping and slurping or are we snipping and boxing? Uh, do you think it's better as, uh, even the of the coral is slurping? Um, directly? No, I think snip's a good idea. So it snips and go, and go to the box. To the box, okay, not into the slurp. Roger. Can I get bubble on craft, please? Roger. landed on the craft. Well, that thing's tiny. If only I had some scaling lasers. All right. Can you zoom in on the coral, please? <coughs> wow. Yeah, that's really tiny. Hmm. Nice. Say again? Maybe you think the slurp is easier? Sure. Uh, what's going on here? Slurp jar number three. Can you come wide, please? Number three? Number three. And what do you want the slurp at? Uh, can you zoom in, please, video? I'll do good there. Uh, I don't know, 50%? Roger. Slurp up to 50. Oh. There we go. Come wide, please. There it is. All right, you can secure the slurp. Securing the slurp. And do flushing and everything else. Roger. Thank you. Now that was sample number 131.